Hi guys, I am back with another market video. I keep getting the same question over and over again. Is this a good time to get into this market? So instead of answering these questions one by one, I decided to make a video to benefit as many people as possible. So we will be looking at what's going on in the market. We'll be hitting a couple of topics to kind of refresh our memory and what the future holds. And at the end of the video, I'll also show you our performance from the beginning of the year. Ready? Let's go. So let's start with a little bit of a refresher on supply and demand. Supply relates to how many trucks or drivers are in the market. How many drivers are there available to transport a load? Demand refers to freight. How many loads are there to transport? When supply exceeds demand, meaning there are more trucks than there is freight, that needs to be moved, the rates start to go down. When demand exceeds supply, meaning there are more loads than there are trucks in the market, the rates obviously start to go up. Now in the current market, what is going on? What is driving these rates down? Number one, it is the influx of carriers and trucks into the market. At the end of 2021, everybody and their grandmother wanted to go into the trucking industry because trucking was so amazing. There was so much money to be made that everyone wanted a piece of that pie. I remember back in 2021, at the end of 2021, Without Deadhead, we were easily averaging $5 per mile or more. With Deadhead, it was around $4 per mile. So there was definitely money to be made. And as more and more trucks and carriers hit the market, there was more and more competition for the loads available in the market. The number two thing that's driving rates down is the decrease in demand. As I mentioned before in one of my videos, when COVID hit, People were spending a ton of money on physical goods to prevent themselves from going crazy. There was nowhere else they could spend their money because they couldn't go anywhere because of the restrictions and the lockdown. So people became best friends with Amazon. They were ordering a ton of useless and useful stuff. Now, as the restrictions went away, people started going out and spending their money in the service sector, AKA things that don't go on a truck. So the demand for physical goods that actually get transported by a truck started going down and therefore there was less freight on the market. So to recap the simplified example, basically more trucks went into the market to get the piece of that pie that was so fat and delicious and everything at the end of 2021 and people started buying more service oriented things instead of physical goods so there was less freight so more trucks on the market less loads to transport that's where you have the problem of today where the rates are going down so now i want to talk about what is happening like right now today what what is going on in the market well number one Consumer spending is obviously going down and part of it is of course inflation. People are spending less money for things because of inflation. But to top it all off, the consumer spending is also shifting. As I said before, instead of spending money on goods, people are now more inclined to spend their money on services. And of course, as more people spend the money that they have on services, the demand for trucks will go down because they're just less loads to transport. Now, the second thing that's happening, it's not something that really is happening. It's just something that we have to look out for. And that is production. That's a big one. Now, what drives production? Of course, consumer spending. The more people are inclined to buy, the more the manufacturers produce those goods. Now, believe it or not, and I know I didn't believe it when I read it, believe it or not, production is currently actually at healthy levels. But if consumer spending goes a little bit down, that's when we're going to have a really big problem. Guys, tell your wives, sisters, grandmothers, mother-in-laws, and all of the ladies in your family to start buying off of Amazon. The number three thing that is happening right now is imports. It's a pretty well-known fact that imports in the international shipping market has been in a state of chaos for the past two years. As of June, the imports are down by 10.6% after a high of 30.6% last year. Now at the moment, the port congestion levels are starting to slowly clear up and that is partially because of the China 
COVID lockdowns. But of course, there could be another spike in imports as the peak season is approaching. Now, the number four thing that's going on is that inventory is pretty high right now. See, shippers, they stocked up on inventory over the past few years in order to keep up with the obscene demand of the past few years. But now that they have a ton of inventory and demand is kind of slipping, the carrying costs or the expenses related to storing unsold inventory are going up. So what does the future hold? Good question. Where is my handy dandy crystal ball when I need it? Well, first of all, let's talk about trucks. The one thing that everyone loves to talk about is how a lot of people are leaving this industry because of the unpredictable market situation at this point. But something that they forget to mention is the truck orders that are being fulfilled right now. There are a ton of people who placed orders back in 2021, either in the middle or towards the end of 2021 to get into this booming market, the seemingly booming market back then. But unfortunately, what happens is when you place an order for a truck, in usual circumstances, it takes months to get that truck. In the circumstances of 2021, there was a backlog. Everything was back ordered. There were not enough parts. So these orders are being fulfilled right now. So those poor guys and girls who decided to get into this booming, amazing market, thinking that they're going to get so much money, unfortunately, got their wish. They're getting their trucks right now and they're about to enter the crap market that we know today. Now, as we continue on with this year, experts are saying that the market will continue to decline through December. Now, as the market declines, as the rates continue to slip, more carriers, more trucks will be forced out of the market. Now, the experts are saying that once the capacity leaves, there will be a chance for a new cycle or a new leaf in the beginning of 2023 but I guess only time will tell. Now, in the previous video, I promised you guys that I would make a video about the general performance of our companies over the last seven months since the beginning of the year in January, 2022. So I want to end this video because I think it goes hand in hand with this topic. I want to end it with showing you the general performance of both our original company as well as our baby company. Now, unlike in my monthly performance videos, I will show you the performance of everybody, basically the company performance, uh, not just the owner operators. So let's go to the board. All right, so I think you guys will be able to see it very clearly. I believe it looks clear, at least from my standpoint. So here's hoping for the best. Okay, so what this is, is our performance from January, 2022 until July 2022. So pretty much half, a little bit more than half a year. This year, as I promised, I was going to show you the general performance of what it all looks like. So what do you need to know? First of all, here are the months, January through July. And here is 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. These are dollar amounts and they refer both to the gross income as well as the expenses. And I'll show you what I mean. So the blue bars, graphs, lines, <laughs> whatever you call them, um, the blue part refers to our original company. This is the company where we operate reefers, and this is the company where we hire drivers. Now, we do not hire drivers in our baby company or the dry van company, which is represented in orange. The reason we do not hire drivers there yet, we will start doing that as well. But the reason we don't hire them yet is because it's just too new. We need to build up a little bit of a reputation there. The second thing I want to mention is you will see these black lines right here. Now, if this is the income, gross income for the month, this is where the expenses fall. So for example, for January, for the original company, the expenses were around $12,000 and uh, on the original company as well as the baby company. And you can see here, and the income on the original company was about $50,000. So this is kind of how I illustrated it here. Now, one thing I want to mention, point number three, is the graph is not exactly what it seems and I'll try to explain it the best I can as we go through it. One more thing I want to mention is the numbers right here above each of the columns is the average rate per mile of that month. These are the average rates we were booking loads for for each company. And you will see as you go through that the average rate per mile is going down. So let's go through it. January. 
The income was around 50,000 on our original company. The rate per mile on average was close to $4 per mile. And this is all with deadhead. And the expenses were around $12,000. Uh, for the dry van, this was the first month of the dry van or the baby company operating full time. Uh, the income was around 32,000. The average rate per mile was $4.10. And the expenses were a little bit under $12,000. So January, pretty great month. February, even though the average rate per mile fell, the overall gross income went up like crazy, but so did the expenses. You'll see the expenses were around $30,000 and the gross income actually, I couldn't fit it here. It was an obscene amount, way over $60,000. The reason is, is because we added an awesome team member to our team back in February and the market was amazing. It was so easy to get loads and it was just wonderful. For the dry van, it was the owner operator who was working in that company and he brought in over 30,000. I think it was like 33 or 34,000. The average rate per mile was $2.73 and the expenses were again around $13,000. So not bad. February was really good. Then comes March. So in March, you can see that the expenses went up even higher and the income went down because February is when everything started kind of crashing and March is when the rates started trickling down. So the average rate per mile for the OG company for the reefers was $2.49. For the baby company, it was $2 also 49 cents. Uh, but what happened is we added another team member here and that's why our expenses were so high because we were trying to get uh, one of our trucks in order, we were maintaining it, we were washing it, we were cleaning it out, etc, etc, etc. So all of these expenses kind of built up that month. Now for the dry van, you will see that the expenses actually went down a little bit. And the reason the gross income was so small or so low is because the owner operator who was working on this truck was actually taking some time getting the truck ready for the new team member we added in our original company. Now, something that is a source of confusion for a lot of people is who are these owner operators? The two owner operators that I keep referring to, they are my business partners. So they own both companies just like I do. They just happen to also have CDLs and they drive for them. One is always in the baby company and one switches from the original company to the baby company, depending on where the need is. So this is what I mean when I say it's a little bit confusing, but that explains why the gross income on the baby company was so low because that owner operator, instead of actually running on the road, he was working on getting that truck ready for our new team member. April was a disaster for our original company. <laughs> and the reason the rate per mile was not horrible. It was $2.56 uh, for the dry van. It was $2.45. What happened is our owner operator who used to be in our original company, he moved to the baby company and he started team driving with the other owner operator in the baby company. Now in here, what happened was the fuel rates went up. Basically it was a crazy month and basically our expenses exceeded our income by about $8,000. So we actually in April on our original company, we operated at a loss of $8,000, which was shocking and we got really scared. I remember at that point, but it is what it is. May rolls around. The owner operators are still operating in a team right here. That's why the income, the gross income is so high. Although the rate per mile went down by five cents to $2.40 and the income for our original company was a little bit higher than the month before. And it's not surprising the rate per mile went up by two cents from the month before. And thankfully the expenses went down, but look at our net income here. This is all we made. So not great at all. Now, June. June was much better than the past two months. So <laughs> for the original company, at least. The rate per mile 
for June for the original company, which is Reefers, was $2.57. And for the dry van, it went down quite a bit to $2.26 per mile. Now the expenses here stayed pretty much the same. It's just the gross income in the original company went up. So our net profit was higher. In terms of the baby company, what happened was it was kind of a messy month where sometimes it was team loads. A lot of solo loads were there. It wasn't consistent. So that's why the gross income went down. But the expenses, again, they kind of went down, you know, month by month, not too much, but they did go down. Now, July, you guys can see that, yep. July was not a wonderful month. The expenses for the original company, they went down quite a bit. And this is partially because the fuel uh, expenses went down, which is awesome. They did go down, but our rate per mile was $2.32. It dropped by over 20 cents since last month. And basically the income was just not there to you know, make too much of a profit. Uh, so yeah, this is our profit right here on the original company, tiny little profit. Now on the baby company, the dry van company, the expenses went up a little bit. Uh, the income went down a bit because one of the owner operators did not work the full month. So again, it was some team, I think there was like three team loads total and everything else was solo, something like that. But the rate per mile actually went up by four cents in the dry van company. Now there are two things that I want you to take away from this. Number one, I want you to realize how much the market has changed. You can see that by the average rate per mile with deadhead. And this is not just the fact that the rates went down, it's that you have to do bigger deadhead nowadays. So that is why the average rate per mile with deadhead is slowly slipping down. Number two, I want you to realize that if you're someone who decides, you know what, I want to try and get into this market, even though it's crap right now, get into it knowing that you are going to be a one man show. I recommend that you drive for yourself, dispatch yourself, get your own MC and just be that one man show. This is important because if you get into this market right now with the thought that I'm just going to go ahead and hire drivers and I have no safety net, but I'll hire drivers and they're going to be driving, I'll be dispatching. This is the best case scenario in terms of your profit. This is the best case scenario. I guess this would be the best case scenario if you're lucky. But this is the reality of the market right now. If you do not have a safety net where you can afford to have a month like April, where you're going to be out $8,000 out of your pocket, don't hire anyone right now. For the first years with our original company, we were a family only business. We were not hiring anyone from outside and we were just building up that safety net because these are the profits. You can see the difference between the dry van and the reefer operations. Just as a company, you can see how big of a difference it is in profit because there is no payroll expense. Now, once you have that safety net and you feel like you are ready to potentially have a month like April or a month where you bring a little bit of a loss or a month where you don't bring anything at all and you just break even, that's when, when you're comfortable with that, that is when you start hiring drivers to actually drive while you run back office and dispatch. So this is the biggest thing I wanted you to take away from this. So as I said before, if you want to get into this market, you can just be prepared that the market seems to be getting worse and worse. Uh, it will correct itself at some point. I keep repeating it, but we just don't know when. It's a question of when. Experts are saying in the beginning of 2023, but only God knows. So my advice, and I'm reiterating here, if you're just getting started and you want to jump into this industry for the hope of better times, I recommend that you jump in knowing that you are going to be a one man show. You have to be prepared to drive for your company, dispatch yourself and do your back office. That way you will be able to build up that safety net and in the future hire team members or drivers. I like to call them team members to start expanding your business. Now, speaking of being a one man show, I have been getting a ton of emails regarding the dispatching course that I mentioned in one of my videos. So uh, it will be available. What I'm doing right now is I'm updating it because it's a little bit outdated and I really don't like the way it looks, to be honest. I, it's so boring. So I'm trying to redo that 
course to be more up to date, uh, more interactive, more fun. So that will be ready within hopefully about two weeks. And once it's ready, I'll make an announcement on my channel so that anyone who's interested can go ahead and check it out and buy the course. Uh, but other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.